time for the ultimate showdown. CNC versus manual machining. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today we're gonna to be diving into the age old and very heated debate between CNC and manual machining and when to use each. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below if you wanna see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we're diving into a conversation that was had on the Practical Machinist Facebook page. Uh, we'll link to it here or in the show notes below. But as Practical Machinist is a community first and foremost, like you guys are Practical Machinists. I'm not Practical Machinist, you guys are. So I like to go in for the Shop Talk series, try to find some of these conversations that are being had between you guys and you know in the community, and then try to you know amplify some of your voices, amplify some of your concerns, and you know maybe just chime in a little bit, try to flesh it out a little bit. So on Facebook, there was a very, very lively discussion, got a ton of comments, so that's why I saw it and thought we should probably talk about it. And the question was, when would you argue it's better to use CNC over manual machining and vice versa? For those who don't know, um, asking this question is often like stepping on a landmine in this trade because there are some very, very strong opinions about this either way. Um, you know, this is a conversation and debate that has been going on since CNC came around. Um, there are very, very strong opinions on both sides but it's always a very fun conversation to have. So to recap some of the comments that were in there, um, you know, you had guys in there saying, you know, manual is really, really good if you're doing all fixturing or manual is really, really good if you're doing one-off stuff. Then you had other guys saying, oh, well no, CNC is better for one-off stuff. Um, you know, you should never do something on a CNC that you could, or you should never do something on a CNC that you can do on a manual. Another guy is saying, well, uh, manual will never be as fast as a CNC. So, I mean, there's a lot of opinions in here, guys. There are very few opinions here that are 100% wrong. Um, a lot of it is shades of gray. Um, the only opinions I would say that are, that I wouldn't agree with here are the hard and fast rules. Um, I think there are very, very few absolutes in this scenario. You know, you should only do this on this or you should never do that. But to kind of get into the conversation, let's start off with manual machining. So manual machining is obviously something that is tried and true. Um, it literally is the foundation of all machining. Um, machines like an engine lathe or an old bridge port, some of these machines can be you know, almost 100 years old. And in the right hands, if someone knows what they're doing, they can still produce highly accurate, highly repeatable, complex work. Um, we got to go down to Vermont in the fall to a place called the American Precision Museum. And it was one of the coolest places I've ever been. It's a place that has um, manual machines all the way up to CNC machines. And it's a, basically a museum that has the whole history of precision machining in that same place. And some of the machines there that were literally from, you know, the 1800s or 1700s that, you know, manufactured rifles for the Revolutionary War they can produce very accurate parts, you know, by the standard of the time, repeatably, and for mass production. And literally, they armed entire armies just by producing things with these machines. And you know, there were consumer goods and all that stuff as well. But manual machining is always, in my opinion, going to have a place. So let's look at the big pros for manual machining. The first one is that with setups on manual machines, can be extremely quick, especially if you have, you know, let's say, a, let's use for this example, you have a bridge port. So you got a bridge port with a vise on the table at all times. You can run up, slap a part in that vise, pick it up, and be making holes or making chips very accurately within seconds if you know what you're doing. Um, it's very difficult to outpace a manual machine when it comes to turning around work really quick if you know what you're doing and it's simple work very very strong in that regard the next one is manual machines can be very flexible compared to cnc machines and by that i mean this there are a lot of kind of wonky setups that i would trust on a manual machine that i wouldn't necessarily trust on a cnc machine in the right hands a lot of this comes down to in the right hands 
And that's because a CNC machine can only do what you tell it. If you tell it feed this way at 100 inches a minute at this depth at this RPM, it's gonna do it and it doesn't care if that part goes flying across the room. With a manual machine, since you are the one behind the handles and you're the one you know, making sure everything works, it gives you the flexibility to be able to kind of monitor what's going on in a setup. So if you have something where there's an angle plate and a part sticking up, you can actually monitor it as you go and make sure, ah, do you know what, that cut seems a little deep, let's back that off, try it that way. So you can be a little more flexible with some kind of scarier setups. I mean, you never want to be unsafe, but with some stuff where, you know, the work holding is a real pain to get done. You can be a little bit more flexible as you make those cuts or you know do those operations and that's a big strength you know there's some guys who can do stuff on manual machines that i wouldn't put near a cnc machine another one is that they are very very good at one-off or short run parts so for example let's say i need to put four top holes in 10 parts i could probably do that very very quickly on a manual machine probably faster than i could set up a cnc machine pick up my parts you know either hand code it or program it in something like Mastercam or Fusion or Bobcat or whatever. You know, to do quick work like that, they're very, very strong. Um, and also, as guys mentioned in that comment thread, they are in some cases very, very good for making fixturing or work holding for CNC machines. A lot of guys I saw there, I really don't do it, but a lot of guys there really harp on the fact that you can do fixturing and work holding on a manual machine for your CNC's, they're finding faster than they can do on CNC's. I don't do that very much, but that was something that really came up in the conversation. The last one that's a big pro for manual machines is quick modifications of parts. Very, very rarely could you ever take a part and modify it. If you just need to take 10 thou off this one little place on a part, you're almost always gonna be able to do that faster and more efficiently on a manual machine. That said, let's get into the cons. Of manual machines. The big one, and it's kind of the linchpin of manual machining, is that manual machines are only going to be as powerful as the operator who runs them. Um, the person who's running it needs to be skilled if you're going to do complex work. Yes, a skilled machinist can set up a manual machine for a less skilled machinist or operator to run and actually do the operations. But there's a lot more points of failure, you know, whether that's switching tools or, you know, having to know that you need to flip. It's just, it's a lot more, it's more manual. It's not automated. So it, there's a lot more points of failure in that. Um, another one is complicated profiles. In my experience, if you have a part, or I don't have an example here, but it has a lot of weird splines and stuff on it, trying to do that with a manual machine with any degree of speed and accuracy is extremely difficult. It's pop possible, you know, guys who have dividing heads and all this stuff, you know, everything used to be made on these machines. That said, doing the really complicated profile work or, you know, mass hogging work, you can usually do it faster elsewhere with, you know, less chance of messing something up. A big one for us that I find, especially in a production type machining shop, is one machinist on a manual machine means one machine running at a time. That's it. Somebody has to stand there and turn the handles. You know, if you're gonna start using power feeds or you know a proto track that has all that there, well, you're into CNC now. That's not really manual machining. Um, that one machinist, somebody needs to stand there and make the parts. That is a big drain when you have you know a lot of work to get done. Maybe you have you know a lot more machines that could be running. There's one guy running that machine, and it's only running when he's standing in front of it. There's no such thing as lights out manual machining. Um, the last one is that less education on these kinds of machines means that unfortunately right now, there are a lot less competent people at manual machining than ever before. Um, so, you know, it's great if you have 10 manual machines in your shop, you're going to have a lot more difficulty finding skilled guys at strictly manual machining today, most likely than CNC machining. So if you're setting yourself up in a shop that has a lot of manual machines, you better be ready to train guys. You better be ready to already have a staff of guys who are good at them. So that said, let's move over to CNC. So obviously guys, CNC means automated, um, you know, CNC, computer numerical, numerical control. We're talking about machines like these, modern CNC machines. The biggest pro, in my opinion, or at least one of the biggest pros, 
for CNC is speed. For material removal, for tool changing, for you know pretty much everything, CNCs are not really going to be able to be beat in a lot of operations by a manual machine. Um, you know, someone can only feed that tool as fast as they can turn that handle. I don't think you can get a 100 inch rapid or a 200 inch rapid out of some guy cranking the handle. You know, they're just operations that you're never gonna be able to beat a CNC machine on, especially tool changing. You know, if you have to go and change a tool by hand, pick it up again, CNC machine, you slap them in, one, two, three, you got three tools in, that machine can go do that all day. The next thing one is, kind of going back to that complicated parts thing, is this is a CNC's bread and butter. Um, a profile for a CNC machine that is square, theoretically is no more difficult for it than one that has a, a hundred little rads on it. You just tell the machine what to do, it doesn't care. It's gonna go exactly where you tell it every single time. Um, and in my opinion, it's a lot easier for guys to program a complicated profile than try to figure it out and keep track of it as you're doing it manually. This is my manual action in case you guys didn't know, it's turning two handles. Um, I don't know why I keep doing that. The next big pro for CNC machines is mass production. This is again, one of the huge factors when it comes into CNC machining. You know, if you can make a big fixture plate with five, 10, even a hundred parts on a tombstone, you can press a button after you set it up once and program it, and that thing can run for a day. There's some guys who have, you know, Kern machines with 100 tools that will automatically check the tool breakage and stuff, and that machine will reload with pallets for 36 hours. I saw a Yazda that was called a 72 hour machine. You load it on Friday, you come back Monday, and it might be finishing up. It's the amount of production you can get out of these things is, you know, it, you can't touch it. You really can't touch it, especially because one operator can go and run three machines. If this is an hour cycle, that's an hour cycle, that's an hour cycle. You can have one operator making three times the production faster than one manual machine. It's, it's really hard to, you know, have an apples to apples comparison on that. Um, and then of course, you know, it, automation. When we're talking about these 72 hour machines, when we're talking about robotic loading, when we're talking about cobots, you're not gonna see a cobot operating a manual machine. It just, it doesn't make any sense. All that kind of automation goes into CNC machines. So for production, what you can add automation, you can take guys out of the equation and let those guys do more productive work. You know, you're not gonna see that with manual. The cons for CNC on the other hand are, number one, huge barrier to entry, especially financially. Uh, if I could go buy a used bridge port for, you know, 10, 20 grand, I don't even know what they go for these days. When you're getting into full-size CNCs, you know, you're talking a much higher amount of money to be able to break into that level of technology. Um, it is a very, very difficult thing to do. You know, we've had lots of discussions about guys wanting to open shops. Financially, putting CNCs on the floor is difficult. Uh, whether you're talking lathes, mills, wire EDM, it's expensive. That is a huge con to um, advocating for CNC for someone who's, you know, in this kind of conversation. The next kind of con for CNC, <coughs> excuse me, is that when things go wrong, things can really go wrong. Um, you know, there's, there's huge safety issues involved with manual machines. There are also huge safety issues involved with CNC. Uh, whether that's, you know, the issues that you can throw parts through a window if you're not careful, or, you know, you can smash the head or the mass into the table and do a ton of damage that may not even be repairable. Um, CNCs are only as smart as people who operate them and program them. So if a person is not paying attention when they program them, they can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. So I, if I have to look for a con on CNC, I would say that is definitely one. They can also be very slow to set up versus manual machining because you know you have to put your vices in or your work holding in. You need to pick it up. You need to set your offsets. You need to set your tool heights. You need to put all your tools and holders. Um, you need to program it. You need to prove out your programs. These are all things that can just make CNC very slow in comparison to a job potentially done on a manual mill or a manual lathe or whatever it may be. Um, I would, it's usually, you know, let's just call that a con. Let's, let's just call that a con. Um, and the last one is it does take more training in a way than manual machining to become competent in it. Um, you know, there's a lot more factors that go into programming a machine, setting it up, 
knowing how to do all those kind of things. You know, you now need to be not only a machinist, but you need to be a computer programmer. So there can be a lot more education that is necessary there than learning on the fly how to be a manual machinist. But anyways, I digress. I could talk forever about how, you know, the education required for manual machining is actually more difficult, but actually the, it's conversation all on its own. So let's just step away from it. So in my opinion, when to use each. Like I said, guys, there are very, very few hard and fast rules where you should either always do it in the CNC or you should never do it on a manual or vice versa. I think that kind of black and white thinking can really pigeonhole you. Cause you know, if you say, oh, I only ever do this kind of work on a CNC. Well, what if all your CNCs are busy and you just need to get it done? Maybe you could actually save some money doing it on a manual. Trying to avoid that kind of black and white thinking of always or never when it comes to CNC versus manual is gonna be critical. In my opinion, for production work, your best bet 99% of the time is gonna be CNC. Um, we went through the pros and the cons. You're not gonna be able to touch it in terms of production. The fact that it can let one guy run multiple machines while doing on the fly QA, while maybe even programming another part, you really can't beat it. So for production, I always lean towards CNC. When it comes to manual, I really lean on them hard for quick modifications and one-off parts. So if I need to make a little T-nut for some guy, I'm not gonna spend the time setting up a machine for it. I'm gonna give it to one of my really good manual guys or go do it myself on a manual mill because it's just gonna be faster and more efficient. Um, manuals are also gonna win out most of the time in my opinion for fix-it jobs. You know, I'm not gonna try to drill out or retap a hole on a CNC machine. If I just need to fix something real quick, I'm always gonna go to the manual. You know, I'm not gonna try to pack out a tap from one part, you know, a broken tap from one part on a CNC. I've done it, but you know, you're gonna be quicker and probably more successful on a manual mill. Um, and at the end of the day, guys, it's really gonna depend on who you are as a machinist or you know, what kind of guys you have working for you. When we were down at uh, a shop called m &R Precision, we have a shop tour coming with them soon in uh, Connecticut. Nope, sorry, they're in Illinois. They had one guy there that had a huge, beautiful, gorgeous, old manual lathe. And this is a very, very sophisticated CNC production oriented shop. They still had this one giant old lathe and they had an old guy there, you know, nearing retirement, who literally could produce more accurate, gorgeous parts faster than the CNC guys by doing it manually. Um, these guys still exist, situations like this still exist. Um, you know, there's always gonna be exceptions to the rule, but that's kind of my thought on when you should use CNC versus manual machining. In any case, guys, I'd like to hear some of your stories below as to when you should have done it the other way. You know, you set it up manual and you really should have done it CNC, or just in general, some of your thoughts on the CNC versus manual debate. Is it even worth having the debate anymore? Can we put this conversation to bed? I don't know, I'd like to know your thoughts below. If you wanna see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe below, turn on the little notifications and then it'll tell you through wherever you're getting this video that a new video has been uploaded so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching guys, you take care.